Well, welcome to the Bible study for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today. And for those who will listen in later on the archives as well, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, before we get started with the Bible study, I'm going to open this up to the opening prayer. Invite the Holy Spirit in to lead us and guide us. Father God, we thank you so very much for the ability to be together, to come together, to study your most precious holy word. We are so grateful for your word, Father God, and we're so grateful for you. We ask your Holy Spirit to come lead us, guide us, direct us, open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart that we may be perfectly receptive to your holy word. We treasure your word, Father, and we treasure you. We give you all of our praise and honor and all glory belongs to you. We pray this prayer in the mighty name, the name above all names, in, you, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. Well, this week we're continuing with the English Standard Version of the Bible, and we're going to begin the book of Daniel. And we're going to be doing the book of Daniel in two weeks. And actually, it's very interesting. Um, the this week it, you're gonna you're gonna see Daniel in cap- captivity, praying for for the nation of Israel also, and also next week chapters seven through twelve are more of the prophetic vision that Daniel was given that mirrors the book of Revelation that John the Revelator was given. So we're going to begin with Daniel the book of Daniel, chapters 1 through 6 this week. Chapter 1, Daniel was taken to Babylon in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with some of the vessels of the house of God. And he brought them to the land of Shinar, to the house of his God and placed the vessels in the treasury of his God. Then the king commanded Ashpenaz, his chief eunuch, to to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility, youths without blemish, of good appearance, and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge, understanding, learning, and confident to stand in the king's palace and to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the king ate and of the wine that he drank. They were to be educated for three years, and at the end of that time, they were to stand before the king. Among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them names. Daniel, he called Belteshazzar. Hananiah he called Shadrach, Mishael he called Meshach, and Azariah he called Abednego. So we know the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We're going to be reading that very, very shortly. Daniel's faithfulness. Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him not to defile himself, and God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king who who assigned your food and your drink, for why should he see that you were in worse condition than the youths who are of your own age, so you would endanger my head with the king? Then Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of the eunuchs had assigned over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Test your servants for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the youths who eat the king's food be observed by you and deal with your servants according to what you see. So he listened to them in this manner and tested them for ten days. At the end of ten days, it was seen that they were better in appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youths who ate the king's food. So the steward took away their food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. 
As for these four youths, God gave them learning and skill in all literature and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. At the end of the time, when the king had commanded that they should be brought in, the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king spoke with them, and all of them, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore they stood before the king, and in every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters that were in all of his kingdom, and Daniel was there until the first year of King Cyrus. Chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar's Dream In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His spirit was troubled and his sleep left him. Then the king commanded that the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans be summoned to tell the king his dreams. So they came in and stood before the king, and the king said to them, I had a dream, and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans said to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servant the dream, and we will show you show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The word for me is firm. If you do not make known to me the dream and its interpretation, you shall be torn limb from limb, and your houses shall be laid in ruins. But if you show the dream and its interpretation, you shall receive from me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore show me the dream and its interpretation. They answered a second time and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show its interpretation. The king answered and said, I know with certainty that you are trying to gain time, because you see that the word from me is firm. If you do not make the dream known to me, there is but one sentence for you. You have agreed to speak lying and corrupt words before me till the time change. Till, I'm sorry, till the times change. Therefore, tell me the dream and I shall know that you can show me its interpretation. The Chaldeans answered the king and said, There is not a man on earth who can meet the king's demands for no great and powerful king has asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter, enchanter or Chaldean. The thing that the king asks is difficult, and no one can show it to the king except the gods who, whose dwelling is not with flesh. Because of this, the king was angry and very furious and commanded that all the wise men in Babylon be destroyed. So the decree went out, and the wise men were about to be killed, and they sought Daniel and his companions to kill them. Then Daniel replied with prudence and discretion to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, who had gone out to kill the wise men of Babylon. He declared to Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree of the king so urgent? Then Ariok made the matter known to Daniel, and Daniel went in and requested the king to appoint him a time that he might show the interpretation to the king. God reveals Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Then Daniel went to his house and made the matter known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, and told them to seek mercy from the God of heaven concerning this mystery, so that Daniel and his companions might not be destroyed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the mystery was revealed to, da to Daniel in a vision of the night, and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever to whom belong wisdom and might. He changes times and seasons, and he removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells with him. To you, O God of my fathers, I give thanks and praise, for you have given me wisdom and might, and have now made known to me what we ask of you. For you have made known to us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went into Ariok, whom the king had appointed to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus to him, Do not destroy the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show the king the interpretation. Then Ariok brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said to him, I have found among the exiles from Judah a man who will make known to the king the interpretation. The king declared Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, 
are you able to make known to me the dream that I have seen and its interpretation? Daniel answered the king and said, No wise men, enchanters, magicians, or astrologers, astrologers can show to the king the mystery that the king has asked. But there is a God in heaven who reveals mystery, mysteries, and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. Your dream and the visions of your head as you lay in bed are these. To you, O king, as you lay in bed came thoughts of what would be after this, and he who reveals mysteries made known to you what it what is to be. But as for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, not because of any wisdom that I have more than all the living, but in order that the interpretation may be known to the king, that you may know the thoughts of your mind. Daniel interprets the dream. You saw, O king, and behold a great image, this image mighty mighty and exceeding mighty and of exceeding brightness stood before you and its appearance was frightening the head of this image was of fine gold its chest and arms of silver its middle and thighs of bronze its legs of iron its feet partly of iron and partly of clay as you looked a stone was cut out by no human hand and it struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces and the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold all together were broken in pieces and became like the chaff of the summer, threshing floors, and the wind carried them away so that not a trace of them could be found. But the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This was the dream. Now we will tell the king its interpretation. You, O king, the king of kings, to whom the God of heaven has given the kingdom, the power, and the might, and glory, and into whose hand he is given wherever they dwell the children of man the beasts of the field and the birds of the heavens making you rule over them you are the head of gold another kingdom inferior to you shall arise after you and yet a third kingdom of bronze which shall rule, rule over all the earth and there shall be a fourth kingdom strong as iron because iron breaks to pieces and shatters all things and like iron that crushes, it shall break and crush all, all these. And as you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, it shall be divided. It shall be a divided kingdom, but some of the firmness of iron shall be in it, just as you saw iron mixed with a soft clay. And of the toes of the feet were partly iron and partly clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly brittle. As you saw the iron mixed with soft clay, so they will mix with one another in marriage, but they will not hold together just as iron does not mix with clay. And in, the, and in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. It shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand forever, just as you saw that a stone was cut from a mountain by no human hand, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold. A great God has made known to the king what shall be after this. The dream is certain, and its interpretation sure. Now that is also future prophecy as well, that, that final kingdom that will never be destroyed, as we know. Daniel is promoted. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and paid homage to Daniel and commanded that an offering and incense be, be offered up to him. The king answered and said to Daniel, Truly your God is, is God of gods and Lord of kings and a revealer, a re, revealer of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this mystery. Then the king gave Daniel high honors and many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief prefect over all the wise men of Babylon. Daniel made a request of the king, and he appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel remained at the king's court. Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar's Golden Image. This is chapter 3. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its breadth six cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to gather the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come 
to the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are followed to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image of the king that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. The fiery furnace, therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the, accused the Jews. They declared to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever, you, you, O king have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made, well and good, but if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the fiery furnace heated seven times more than it was usually heated, and he ordered some of the mighty men of his army to, to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and they were thrown into the burning fiery furnace, because the king's order was urgent, and the furnace overheated the flame of the fire, killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to the counselors, Do we not cast three men? Down into the fire, they answered and said to the king, True, O king, he answered and said, But I see four men unbound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like the son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the burning fiery furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of their heads was not singed, their cloaks were not harmed, and no smell of fire had come upon them. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him and set aside the king's commands, and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree, any people, nation, or language that speaks anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb, and their houses laid in ruins, for there is no other god who is able to rescue in this way. 
Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar praises God, King Nebuchadnezzar, to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied to you. It has seemed good to me to show the signs and wonders that the Most High God has done for me. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and his dominion endures from generation to generation. Nebuchadnezzar's second dream. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at ease in my house and prospering in my palace. I saw a dream that made me afraid. As I lay in bed, the, the fancies and the visions of my head alarmed me. So I made a decree that all the wise men of Babylon should be brought before me, that they might make known to me the interpretation of the dream. Then the magicians, the enchanters, the Chaldeans, and the astrologer, astrologers came in, and I told them the dream could not make known to me its interpretation. At last, Daniel came in before me, he who was named Belteshazzar, after the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And I told him the dream, saying, O Belteshazzar, chief of the magicians, because I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in you, and that no mystery is too difficult for you. Tell me the visions of my dream that I saw, and the interpretation, the vision of my head as I lay in bed, were these I saw, and behold, a tree in the midst of the earth, and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong, and its top reached to heaven, and it was visible to the end of the whole earth. Its leaves were beautiful, and its fruit abundant, and it, in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it, and the birds of the heavens lived in its branches, and all flesh was fed from it. I saw in the vision of my head as I lay in bed, and behold, a watcher, a holy one, came down from heaven. He proclaimed aloud and, and said thus, Chop down the tree and lop off its branches, strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beasts flee from under it and the birds from its branches. But leave the stump of its roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze amid the tender grass of the field. Let him be wet with the dew of heaven. Let his portion be with the beasts and the grass of the earth. Let his mind be changed from a man's, and let a beast's mind be given to him, and let seven periods of time pass over him. The sentence is by the decree of the watchers, the decision by the word of the holy ones, to end that the living may, to the end that the living may know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will, and sets over it the lo lowliest of men. The stream I, King Nebuchadnezzar, saw, and you, O Belshazzar, tell me the interpretation, because all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known to me the interpretation, but you are able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in you. Daniel interprets the second dream. Then Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was dismayed for a while, and his thoughts alarmed him. The king answered him, Belshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation alarm you. Belshazzar answered and said, My lord, may the dream be for those who hate you and its interpretation for your enemies the tree you saw which grew and became strong so that its top reached to heaven and it was visible to the end of the whole earth whose leaves were beautiful and its fruit abundant and in which the food for all under which beasts of the field found shade and in whose branches the birds of the heaven lived it is you o king who have grown and become strong your greatness has grown and reaches to heaven and your dominion to the ends of the earth and because the king saw a watcher, a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, Chop down the tree and destroy it, but leave the stump of its roots in the earth, bound with a band of iron and bronze in the tender grass of the field, and let him be wet with the dew of the heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven periods of time pass over him. This is the interpretation of king. It is a decree of the Most High which has come upon my lord the king, that you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. You shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and you shall be wet with the dew of heaven, and seven periods of time shall pass over you, till you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men, and gives it to whom he will. And as it was commanded to leave the stump of the roots of the tree, your kingdom shall be confirmed for you from the time that you know that heaven rules. Therefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable to you. Break off your sins by practicing righteousness, 
and your iniquities by showing mercy to the oppressed, that there may perhaps be lengthening of your prosperity. Nebuchadnezzar's humiliation. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of twelve months, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, and the king answered and said, Is not this great Babylon which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty? While the words was, were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken the kingdom has departed from you. And you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and you shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and seven periods of time shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. Immediately the word was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from among men and ate grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair grew as long as eagles' feathers, and his nails were like birds' claws. Nebuchadnezzar restored. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me. And I was blessed, and, and I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, and he does according to his will among the hosts of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say to him, What have you done? At the same time, my reason returned to me, and the glory for my kingdom, my majesty, and splendor returned to me. My counselors and my lords sought me, and I was established in my kingdom, and still more greatness was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, for all his works are right, and his ways are just, and those who walk in pride he is able to humble. Chapter 5, The Handwriting on the Wall, King Bel Belshazzar made a great feast for a thousand of his lords and drank wine in the front, in front of the, of the thousand. Now, this is, this is after Nebuchadnezzar. This is his son, Belshazzar. When he tasted the wine, commanded that the vessels of gold and of silver that Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem be brought with the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines might drink from them. Then they brought in the golden vessels that had been taken out of the temple, the house of God in Jerusalem, and the king and his lords, his wives, and his concubines drank from them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Immediately, the finger of a human hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, opposite the lampstand, and the king saw the hand as it wrote. Then the king's color changed, and his thoughts alarmed him, his limbs gave way, and his knees knocked together. The king called loudly to bring in the enchanters, the Chaldeans, and the astrologers. The king declared to the wise men of Babylon, whoever reads this writing and shows me its interpretation shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the writing or make known to the king the interpretation. Then King Belshazzar was greatly alarmed and his color changed and his lords were perplexed. Okay. Then King Belshazzar was greatly alarmed and his color changed and his, lord, his lords were perplexed. The queen, because of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banqueting hall, and the queen declared, O king, live forever. Let not your thoughts alarm you, or your color change. There is a man in the kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. In the days of your father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods, were found in him. And King Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, made him chief of the magicians, enchanters, Chaldeans, and astrologers. Because an excellent spirit, knowledge, and understanding to interpret dreams, explain riddles, and solve problems were found in this Daniel, whom the king named Bel Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. 
Daniel interprets the handwriting. Then Daniel was brought in before the king. The king answered and said to Daniel, You are that Daniel, one of the exiles of Judah, whom the king, my father, brought from Judah. I have heard of you that the spirit of the gods is in you, and the light, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom are found in you. Now the wise men, the enchanters, have been brought in before me to read this writing and make known to me its interpretation. They could not show the interpretation of the matter, but I've heard that you can give interpretation and solve problems. Now, if you can read the writing and make known to me its interpretation, you shall be clothed with purple and have a chain of gold around your neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Nevertheless, I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high God, gave Nebuchadnezzar your father kingship and greatness and glory and majesty. And because of the greatness that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would, he killed, and whom he would, he kept alive. Whom he would, he raised up, and whom he would, he humbled. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened, so that he dealt proudly, he was brought down from his kingly throne, and his glory was taken from him. He was driven from among the children of mankind, and his mind was made like that of a beast, and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. He was fed grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven until he knew that the Most High God rules the kingdom of mankind and sets over it whom he will. And you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, though you knew all this. But you have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven, and the vessels of his house have been brought in before you, and you and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, and of bronze, iron, and wood, and stone, which do not see or hear or know, but the God in whose hand is your breath, and whose, whose all are all your ways you have not honored. Then from his presence the hand was sent, and this writing was inscribed. And this is the writing that was inscribed, Many, many, Tekel, and Parson. This is the interpretation of the matter. Many, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. Perez, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then Belshazzar gave the command, and Daniel was clothed with purple, a chain of gold was put around his neck, and a proclamation was made about him that he should be the third ruler of the king in the kingdom. That very night Belshazzar the Chaldean king was killed, and Darius the Mede received the kingdom being about 62 years old. So this is also the one of the visions that Nebuchadnezzar saw in that second dream that Daniel interpreted, that the kingdom would be divided. So it was. It was divided into the Medes and the Persians. Chapter 6, Daniel and the Lion's Den. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be throughout the whole kingdom. And over them, three high officials of whom Daniel was one, to whom these satraps should give account, so that the king might suffer no loss. Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials and satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Then the high officials and the satraps sought to find a ground for complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, but they could not find no ground for complaint or any fault because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. Then these high officials and satraps came by agreement to the king and said to him, O King Darius, live forever. All the high officials of the kingdom and prefects and the satraps, the counselors, and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction that whoever makes petition to any god or man 
For thirty days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and injunction. When Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had done previously. Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and plea before his God. And they came near and said before the king concerning the injunction, O king, did you not sign an injunction that anyone who makes petition to any god or man within thirty days except to you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing stands fast according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then they answered and said before the king Daniel, who is one of your exiles from Ju one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel, and he labored till sun went till, till the sun went down to rescue him. Then these men came by agreement to the king and said to the king, Know, O king, that this is the law of the Medes and Persians, that no injunction or ordinance that the king establishes can be changed. Then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet, and with the signet of his lords, that nothing might be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace, palace and spent the night fasting. No diversions were brought to him, and sleep fled from him. He didn't, real, he didn't realize when he um, made made signed that decree that document that it was going to harm daniel until this actually happened and he really loved daniel then at day then at break of day the king arose and went in haste to the den of lions as he came near to the den where daniel was he cried out in a tone of anguish the king declared to daniel oh daniel servant of the living god has your god whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions then daniel said to the king O king, live forever, my God, send his angel and shut the lion's mouth. They have not harmed me, because I was found blameless before him, and also before you. O king, I have done no harm. Then the king was exceedingly glad, and commanded that Daniel be taken up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no kind of harm was found on him, because he had trusted in his God. And the king commanded, and those men who had been maliciously accused Daniel were, were brought and cast into the den of lions, they, their children, and their wives. And before they reached the bottom of the den, the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces. Then King Darius wrote to all the peoples, nations, and languages that, that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in all my royal dominion people are to tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. For he is the living God, enduring forever. His kingdom shall never be destroyed, and his dominion shall be to the end. He delivers and rescues. He works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. He who has saved Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. That's the end of our reading for this, for, for this week. And again, next week, we will complete the book of Daniel, reading chapter 7 to 12. So to recap, the book of Daniel was written by the prophet Daniel in the late 6th century BC. The central message of the book is the rise and fall of kingdoms, or also could mean God controls the destiny of all nations. As you could see in the interpretations of the dreams and and also what happened to Nebuchadnezzar's son. Daniel was a Judean exile at the court of Babylon. He was deported as a teenager in 605 BC, about eight years before Ezekiel and the first exiles were taken captive. And he lived in Babylon for 60 years. Daniel belonged to the royal family and was exceptionally able, intelligent, and skillful in wisdom. 
also taking into captivity were three young men, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, who were later known by their Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The deportation of the royal family into Babylon had been prophesied by Isaiah to King Hezekiah. And of thy sons they shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. That was in Isaiah 39, verse 7. Along with thousands of captives from Judah were taken into Babylon exiles between 605 and 582 BC. The treasures of Solomon's palace and the temple were also transported. The Babylonians had subdued all the provinces ruled by Assyria and had consolidated their empire into an area that covered much of the Middle East. Although in siege, although the siege and carrying away of captives into Babylon lasted several years, the mighty men of valor, the skilled and the educated, were taken from Jerusalem early in the war. The Babylonians subdued all of the provinces ruled by Assyria and had consolidated the empire into an area that covered much of the Middle East. In order to govern such a diversified kingdom over such an expanse of space required a skillful administration, administrative bureaucracy. The manpower needed to govern, or govern such a kingdom came from slaves who were educated or possessed needed, needed skills. Because of their wisdom, knowledge, and handsome appearance, four young Hebrew men were selected for the training program. The outstanding character of Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah came, the, and the, the latter three, as we know, came to be known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, secured those positions for them in the king's palace. And Daniel rose above all of the wise men of the vast empire, as we saw. Daniel's importance as a prophet was emphasized by Jesus in Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 to 28. Daniel's name means God is my judge. He is unshakable. His unshakable consecration to the Lord and his loyalty to God's people strongly affirm that God was his judge. The book of Daniel is called an apocalypse or an unveiling, which we'll see next week for sure. When wickedness seemed supreme in the world and evil powers were dominant in an apocalypse was given to show the real situation behind that. As I said, we're going to see that um, next week. Daniel was very quick, was very quickly excelled in the wisdom in Babylon, and he was elevated to one of the three highest positions in the kingdom. Even when Daniel was thrown into a den of man-eating lions, he survived because God's hand was mightily upon him in Babylon. Daniel even witnessed the horrific humiliation of King Nebuchadnezzar, who roamed through the forest and ate grass like an animal for seven years. He was humbled because he, he had pride and, and took, uh, basically said he did all of this. Well, no, God allowed him to have it. And God humbled him to let him know that, you know, he can, he can take his, his kingdom away from him and cause him to be like a wild animal, which he did. He was warned, actually, in that second dream. One of the beautiful themes of this book is the emphasis on, on separation unto God, which Daniel as the ultimate, was the ultimate example from their decision not to eat the king's food to the refusal to bow down to the image of the king. Daniel and his three friends displayed such an uncompromised spirit that, that great opportunities were open to God to display his power on their behalf. Their courageous commitment presents timeless challenge to believers not to compromise their testimony of Jesus Christ, of Yeshua. Even though it may mean a fiery furnace testing the Lord's protection, deliverance will always will, will be there. Another theme of Daniel is the total superiority of God over all occult attempts to reveal and interpret spiritual mysteries. Try as they did, all the magicians, soothsayers, wise men, and astrologers of, astrologers of the king's court were no match for God. This should be an enduring encouragement to believers as well. 
Spiritual counterfeiters can never stand before the wisdom and power of the Holy Spirit. I say that again. And that goes to the New Age um, belief system. Spiritual, which are spiritual counterfeiters. And they are actually just uh, tuning into not the Holy Spirit, but familiar spirits, which are actually demonic. Spiritual counterfeiters can never, never stand before the wisdom and power of the Holy Spirit. In this book, Daniel, uh, in, the, in the book of Daniel, we see the word vision or visions 32 times. Daniel is known as the prophet of the times of the Gentiles. So um, actually, um, chapters 1 through 6 is history and of Daniel and 7 through 12 is prophecy. So we're going to see that the prophetic end of things and how it lines up with um, the book of Revelation as well. So um, we see the way chapter 2 is set up. God gave Nebuchadnezzar a dream. He gave Daniel the interpretation. The interpretation was not just for Nebuchadnezzar's time, but it was also for a future time. It was about a future and about future world powers, especially that second dream. God gave Daniel another dream. Well, actually the first dream too, because of, of that image that he, he was given of the four kingdoms. God gave Daniel another dream vision 60 years later. This is recorded in Daniel chapter 7, which we will again see next, what we're going to read next week. So, um, we saw two dreams of Nebuchadnezzar, the golden image, um, which was erected. Actually, Nebuchadnezzar erected a golden image to perpetuate himself as a god. And it required all inhabitants of the kingdom to bow down to worship the image. And we know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not. They were being faithful to the living God, and they refused to bow. And we know they were put in the fiery furnace, and um, it was heated up seven times more than what it normally was. It actually burned up the men that threw them into the fire but it did not harm them. And, and then there was a fourth person in the furnace with them. And that was, that was Yeshua, the son of God. Fourth is like the son of God. Nebuchadnezzar's second dream, the dream of the great tree, terrified Nebuchadnezzar. It was this dream that changed Nebuchadnezzar's life and his eternal destiny. Only Daniel can interpret the dream because God gave him the interpretation. Nebuchadnezzar was stricken with madness for seven years. And the stump of the tree was spared, which meant that God did not take away Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom. After seven years, the, the tree stump sprouted, meaning that the Gentile nations will bow and seek the Lord. And after seven years, Nebuchadnezzar's sanity and his kingdom were restored to him. And he worshiped the Lord, the true God, and commanded that the entire world worship the God of Daniel. Then we see the handwriting on the wall. Nebuchadnezzar's son, Belshazzar, allowed himself to get puffed up with pride, uh, just as his father had done. And he did not, he, he knew, and Daniel actually confronted him. And he said, you, you knew of these things, yet you insulted the God of heaven by drinking and partying, basically, uh, with the vessels that came from his house and making a toast to honor the gods of silver, the gods of gold, silver, wood, etc., and didn't honor the God, of, the God of heaven. So that day, actually, the kingdom was taken from Belshazzar. He actually, he actually died um, that day. Um, God hates sin, especially the sin of pride. And Daniel was the only one in the kingdom that can interpret the handwriting that appeared on the wall. 
and basically, you know, it, the, the long and short of that one is, uh, you know, God judged, immediately judged Belshazzar and said, you know, his judgment, yeah, he, his kingdom was hung in the balances. He, he, you know, his kingdom was ended right then and there. And of course, uh, that was also um, prophesied um, that the, you know, there would be another, another kingdom, four, four kingdoms actually. Um, and the next kingdom would be a divided one, and it was the Medes and the Perds, per Persians. And then we have Daniel in the lion's den. Um, Darius was the king at that time, and we saw what happened there. God does not want us to bow down and worship idols or false gods either. God not only delivered Daniel, but he also promoted him. So, um, that is our recapping of this week's reading from the Bible. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this powerful lesson. We thank you. We thank you for preserving that history of these wonderful people that stayed faithful to you, even in captivity. They, they would not bow down. They would not bow down to false gods, and they... they kept your commandments to worship only you. And that holds true to us today. Those commandments still, still stand. And we honor you. You are our only God. We worship no other. There is no one like you. Idols of gold, silver, wood, money, whatever other idols, they can't, they can't do what you do. You are, our, you are a creator. You're the living God, the God who is in control of everything because everything belongs to you. Nothing, nothing can compare to you. So we give you all of our praise. We give you all of the honor and glory, because it all belongs to you, and we belong to you, your children. We love you so much, and we pray this prayer in the most mighty name, a name above all names, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and Amen. Speaking of Yeshua, Jesus, Yeshua is his Hebrew name, and it means salvation. We are moving into the altar call. This is something that the Lord put on my heart right from the very beginning when we brought our ministry online, that there needs to be an altar call with every teaching, every service. And I never know who may stumble across these videos that really needs to hear this and may be ready to accept the Lord as their Savior and get saved and born again. And I hope one day when we're in heaven that that those that stumbled over this and gave their lives to the Lord will come up and 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 let me know that that they have you know they stumbled across this video and that was the day they decided to to come to the Lord. And all glory goes to him. This is something that he has asked me to do and and um, I am doing as he asked me to do. And again, like I said, I never know who may stumble over this and how many souls may be actually born again and saved and saved from eternal damnation. And that is the beautiful, that's a beautiful thing that uh, to think of that many souls could, you know, be joining us in heaven. And that is our great commission for those of us that are already born again and saved. We need to share the gospel as often as we can with as many people as, as we can because we want to take as many souls to heaven with us. But we can't save anybody. Only Jesus can because he died for, he died for each and every person that has ever and will ever live on this planet. So the world will tell you there's many, there's many paths to heaven and that's a lie. That's a bold-faced lie. There's only one way, and that is through Jesus. 
he would never have had to die on a cross if there were many ways to get to heaven. And all the money in the world is not going to buy your way to heaven either. Jesus loved you so much, loved me so much that he, he took on every sin imaginable in this world so that that is our path, that is our road to redemption is through him and him alone. Salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences. Our Lord took it all. He took all the sins of the world with him when he laid down his life on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever and we could be reconciled to the Father. There was no other way. The preparation for that day when Jesus died on the cross had been the the types and the the type and shadow of the animal sacrifices that came that were in the Old Testament, um, and Moses instructed the people. Actually, God had instructed Moses, and Moses had instructed the people. Now, the the part that that parallels here is these animals had to be spotless, blameless. They had to be perfect in every way, and much, much of the time, those animals were, were little lambs. So this is why Yeshua, Jesus, was, was, is referred to as the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. The animal sacrifices did not take the sins of the world away. It only covered it for a time period. So year after year, there were animal sacrifices to cover the sins of the people. Now, Jesus came second of the Godhead, perfect, pure, innocent, never, never sinned in his entire life that he was on this earth. So yes, he was the sacrificial lamb that took away the sins of the world. His sacrifice of his life did provide that path to complete redemption and removal of sin. Now, what we need to do It is our choice. God gives us free will. But what we need to do is confess those sins and he will forgive you. No matter how far you think you've fallen, you've not fallen far, uh, too far from the Lord to call out to him and he will save you. He will redeem you. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is not one who has not. We're born into sin, so we're all on equal, we're all on equal ground, and sin is sin no matter what. And sin cannot stand before a holy God. And the wages of sin are death, basically separation from our Creator. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We cannot save ourselves. Only Jesus can. And he paid our sin debt in full already. So all you need to do is call on the name of Jesus, and he will save you. He will redeem you. He will be Lord over your life. Jesus will come again. He, 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 he will be coming again to rule and reign. And when he does, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is king. Jesus is the Lord, because he is. 1 John chapter 1, verse, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He is the only one that can do that for you. And you have a choice. This life that you're living is very temporary. You're not going to go on forever. And one day you will, it will cease and your spirit will exit your body. And, and that will go on forever. Your spirit will live forever. But where will it go? Will it go into heaven or will it go to hell? Those places are very real. 
don't want to miss being with the Lord who loves you so much that he died for you. Amen? Amen. So if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you, if you wish to do this now, you would like to become a member of the family of God, you can say this simple prayer with me now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I realize now I can't save myself. There's nothing I can do for me to be able to go to heaven on my own merits. I need Jesus. He is the Messiah. He is and always has been the Messiah. He is the Savior of the world. And I acknowledge Jesus. And I believe that you died on a cross. You were buried. You rose again. You're sitting at the right hand of the Father. I believe you also, you also took our illnesses and afflictions with you when the Roman soldiers beat you uh, and by your wounds, I am also healed. I believe that as well. Jesus, I can never thank you enough for, for loving me that much that you died for, for me. You paid my sin debt in full so that I could have eternal life. And I, I do believe those verses that said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I believe God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. I believe you are the king of kings. I believe you are the Lord of lords. And I thank you. I thank you. For paying my sin debt in full and I am so sorry and please forgive me for anything that I might have ever done. I am confessing my sins to you now and I accept the gift of salvation and eternal life. I'm asking you also to be my Lord. Rule and reign over my heart. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me to guide me in all of your ways so that I may walk more righteous and, and become more like you each and every day from this day forward. I believe through you and you alone, Jesus, that I'm healed, saved, born again, delivered and set free from sin and the consequences of sin, and am now healthy of mind, body, and soul. In Jesus Christ, precious, mighty, awesome name, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, the name above all names, I pray this prayer. Amen and amen. And if you said that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the family of God. I am going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or a Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Bible and not doctrines of, of the world and all kinds of other, other places. It really sticks to the word of God. How do you know that you're getting sound doctrine? I would suggest that you get a copy of the Bible, a hard copy of the Bible, actually. But how to decide what version of the Bible, that's the, the next dilemma. Uh, a lot of people get caught up in different versions of the Bible. I'm going to just suggest that you get a Bible Hub or Bible Gateway, and you can and that is online, and um, type in a verse of the Bible. Type it and just type in John 3.16. Uh, and look at the different versions. Bible Gateway will, will give you like a drop down and you can go from version to version um, of the Bible. And the one that, that most resonates with you, that you feel very comfortable with as you're testing different verses and looking at the different versions, I, I, I would suggest that you get the one that you're most comfortable with because to start with anyway, uh, because that's the one that you're most liable to not Put on, put on a shelf and let it collect dust, but actually one that you will read. And that's what we really want is for you to commit to reading the Bible uh, because that's how you're going to know that you're getting sound doctrine because it's coming from the Word of God. And also then make a commitment to reading the Bible 
before you read the Bible, pray. Ask the Holy Spirit to guide you, to teach you. The, the Holy Spirit is an excellent teacher. And he's living inside of you now as a believer. I would encourage you to also, I mean, you, you can certainly continue to partake of our Bible study that's been ongoing online. Uh, and it will continue to be ongoing and online. We have a, a complete archive uh, Bible study of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life version. And that's the version of the Bible we use for Shabbat services. And um, this version of the Bible, the English Standard Version, we began last January. So we'll probably be completed uh, with the English Standard Version, we will be probably finishing it towards the end of this year. Um, so, um, just to let you know that all of that has been archived on both YouTube, Rumble, and on our social media platforms. Now, the earlier ones, probably not, because we, we did not belong, uh, we, we were not over on um, USA.life, MeWe, and, and Gab from the beginning, we did we did move on to those platforms later on. But uh, Facebook, yes, we, we started on Facebook, actually. Um, so all of our archives are, are there from the beginning. So you're most welcome to partake in that. But I would also encourage you, if you're joining a local church or messianic congregation, um, most of them or all of them should have a Bible study that you can get involved in. And the more that you're in the word of God, the closer you are to God, because this is his instruction and manual for us. But you can also get to know the heart of the father as well. And yes, he is now your heavenly father, by which you can refer to him as Abba, father. So you are part of the family of God and God is our creator and he is our heavenly father. And that's really an awesome thing to be able to say, you know, your father is the heavenly father. He created you anyway. He wants relationship with you too. He doesn't care about religion. So as you are selecting uh, a local congregation, don't get all caught up in, 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 denominational things that you know denominations can also tend to divide us because then you have doctrine that is all thrown into different denominations i'm going to say stick to the word of god stick to the bible waymaker messianic jewish and christian center usa we are non-denominational we are biblical uh, and we are based on ephesians chapter 2 both Jew and Gentile believers of Messiah, born again and saved in one body of Messiah. We're all one and the same. And this is how it will be in, in, in eternity. There's not going to be divisions. There's not going to be uh, denominations. We're all part of the family of God worshiping the King. Amen. Amen. I also encourage you to develop a prayer life. Yes, take your prayers to God. Take your prayers to your Heavenly Father. He knows what's on your heart, but he also, like I said, wants to have a relationship with you so you can talk to him like you would a friend. Abraham was a friend of God and many others, as you will read in the Bible. With that being said, I'm going to bring our Bible study to a close for this week. Like I said, we will be completing the book of Daniel next week. And next week is is actually uh, chapter 7 to 12. It's more prophetic that lines up with the book of Revelation, as you will see. So the Aaronic blessing is also known as the priestly blessing. It's also, you know, if if you have attended, attended churches or, or what have you, um, um, you will see that it's also called be the benediction. So this is found in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. 
the Lord spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons. And Aaron was the high priest at the time, and his sons were, were the Kohanim, or the priests that ministered in the tabernacle and to the people. So the blessing contains, a, actually the ironic blessing contains a blessing, specific words that, that God wanted them to speak over the children of Israel. And, and he said, and they shall put my name on them and I will bless them. So these are words of blessing from Father God. Now, when you are born again and saved, this, this blessing is also for you because you are part of the Commonwealth of Israel now. Again, you're grafted in. You are grafted in to the natural branch. So I'm going to say the blessing in Hebrew first, and then I will say it in English. So this blessing is for all. Ibarakaka Adonai ve Ishmareka, Yaea Adonai Panapaleka ve Kuneka, Isa Adonai Panapaleka vea Semleka, Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. And it's still early enough in the week to say Shavuoto. Have a good week. Also, don't forget, we have Tuesday evening, our live meeting at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our free conference call.com channel. You are most welcome to join us. Look for, if you're following us on social media platforms, uh, look for the announcement. And within the body of that announcement, you'll see the two different ways that you can join us, either by phone or by web address. Also, this week we will be having Rosh Kadesh Nisan services and Holy Communion. Uh, this is a new, uh, the week of the new moon, and also we're we're leaving the month of Adar and moving into the month of Nisan, which is the month of the Passover. So April will be a very busy, busy month um, because we have the first three of the spring feasts, the commanded feasts of God. So uh, look, look forward to that um, in the upcoming month. Again, Shavuot Tov, have a good week and God bless each and every one of you.